Hey guys, so today it's all about the Hubble Space Telescope and this new space telescope. It's the James Webb Space Telescope and it will hopefully launch in December this year. What I will do today is a short comparison between the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope. And don't be afraid, but today there will be two formulas involved, and but not hard ones, very short formulas, and it's only to describe the whole thing uh, better for you and to have a better understanding and so on. This video will not be so long, so I will just uh, focus on some points of this comparison. So yeah, have fun and enjoy. Hubble is 13.2 meters or 43.5 foot long and its maximum diameter is 42 meters or 14 feet. It is about the size of a large truck. James Webb Space Telescope Sun Shield is about 22 meters by 12 meters or 69.5 feet by 46.5 feet. The Sun Shield is about the size of a tennis court. The main mirror has 16 individual segments. Because of the size of this big space telescope, it will be folded like this, like an origami, to fit into the rocket head. The cost for the James Webb Space Telescope increased from 0.5 billion US dollar to 10 billion US dollars. On the left hand side you can see a model of the James Webb Space Telescope compared to a human model. On the right hand side you can see a model of the Hubble Space Telescope and its main mirror. Hubble's optical capabilities reach from visible to near infrared region. And as the Spitzer Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope will focus on infrared region. So for example, the Hubble Space Telescope would see all you can see here, but the James Webb Space Telescope will actually only see the amber of this pipe. I also found some other guys smoking pipes, so if you know these people, please write me a comment. <laughs> I think I can see some pattern here, but that's another story. <laughs> okay, back to the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope main mirror covers an area of 25 square meters or 269.1 square feet. In contrast, the Hubble Space Telescope covers an area of effective 4 square meters or 25.8 square feet. To give you an idea of the relative sizes of these main mirrors, I draw some squares here. So as you know, for the telescopes, one big aspect is the aperture. So how big is the opening and how big is the mirror? And when you compare the James Webb Space Telescope to the Hubble Space Telescope, you will find that the main mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope is able to collect 6.25 times more light than the Hubble Space Telescope. So the overall capability of the James Webb Space Telescope to collect light is 6.25 bigger than the Hubble Space Telescope. That also has an implication uh, with regard to the magnitude. So how faint can an object be to actually see it or to capture it. So when you check the literature you will find that the James Webb Space Telescope limit for the apparent magnitude is around 
34. And the apparent magnitude limit for the Hubble Space Telescope is around 31.5. But what does this actually mean? So I also covered this in another uh, video or episode. You will find it here or here, I'm not sure. <laughs> so one important graph in this whole brightness thing is the magnitude scale. And on the y-axis you have the brightness and on the x-axis you have the apparent magnitude. And you will see that it's not linear but logarithmic. And this has big implications. The dimmer an object appears, the higher the numerical value given to its magnitude, with a difference of 5 magnitudes corresponding to a brightness factor of exactly 100. You can also write it like this. And the fifth root of 100 is about 2.512. So if you go from apparent magnitude of 0 to 1, that means the star or the object with the apparent magnitude of 1 is 2.512 dimmer than an object with apparent magnitude of 0. You can also calculate uh, how dim the object will be or how bright it will be in the other direction if you do this calculation here. So if you want to compare the apparent magnitude of an object of 1 to an object with the apparent magnitude of 3, you have, two, um, you have a difference of 2, so the delta m will be 2 in this case. So this is very nice to know, right? So the James Webb Space Telescope has a limit of for the apparent magnitude of about 34 and the Hubble Space Telescope has a limit of for the apparent magnitude of about 31.5. But what does this actually mean? So let's make an illustration here, right? You have the apparent magnitude scale and this has a 2 and it also has a positive and a negative region. And objects, as I said before, with a negative value or a smaller value than the positive one, for example, are brighter. For example, the quite bright star Vega has an apparent magnitude of about a zero. But let's go on with our scale. Mars and Jupiter, for example, have an apparent magnitude of minus 2.9 and the Sun, as a very bright object, has an ap apparent magnitude of minus 27. When we go into the other direction, you will find M31 Andromeda Galaxy with an apparent magnitude of 3.4. So let's do some comparison with this. So I did some math. So let's assume the magnitude of zero is equal to the diameter of the Earth. Then the magnitude of 3 would be equal to the distance between Paris and Berlin. An M57 ring nebula, which I also covered in another video, uh, has an apparent magnitude of about 8.8. .8. So that's a really, really dim object. A magnitude of plus 8.8, .8, like M57, would be equal to the distance between London Tower Bridge and Westminster Abbey. Are you also shocked now? And this is only an apparent magnitude of 8.8. .8. And the James Webb Space Telescope is able to see objects with an apparent magnitude of 34. Can you, can you imagine? I, I, I think it's crazy. I, I think it's really crazy. So yeah, as I said before, the Hubble Space Telescope limit for the apparent magnitude is 31.5. So what does this mean? In which region are we? So just to summarize, in my model, for my calculations, I assumed that the apparent magnitude of zero which is equal to the brightness of the star Vega, equals the diameter of the Earth. And as you also saw, the apparent magnitude of 8.8 .8 for the ring nebula M57, um, in my model, 
uh, equals to a distance of 3.4 kilometers or 2.1 miles. I think it's really crazy. So now assume you have an instrument which is able to detect an object, a deep sky object, um, with a limit at 34. What do we think? In which region are we compared to this Earth model? Let's think about it for a few seconds. So when you do the math, then my dear astro interested people, we are in a region of around five to seven micrometers. That's around the size of a red blood cell. And as I said before, the James Webb Space Telescope is able to even detect fainter objects with an apparent magnitude limit of about 34. And when you do the math, you will find that the James Webb Space Telescope is able to detect nine times fainter objects compared to the Hubble Space Telescope. So I think that's really crazy. Both instruments, but especially the James Webb Space Telescope and the detection limit and the um, total size of this instrument and also the costs, of course, it's, it's really crazy. It's a big machine, it's a powerful one. And um, I think we are all looking forward to see the first light of this great, great, awesome machine instrument machine uh, telescope and um, yeah i'm missing the words it's it's really crazy and i'm i'm so looking forward for this um, to this launch and yeah let's hope for the best for the launch and for the instrument and so on and um, yeah please leave me a comment maybe you have your own calculations or maybe you want to tell me some other facts maybe um, some facts you will not find so easily or something and please give me a thumbs up or maybe consider to subscribe to my channel and so i hope you had some fun watching this and see you next time clear skies